What's up everyone? I am going to be taking you through the best specs for Octane Render, a fantastic unbiased rendering engine that's going to allow you to get the very best out of the likes of Cinema 4D. So by the end of this video, you're going to be able to know how to spec up the ideal Octane Render workstation. Uh, so you've got like super sweet workflow. So let's roll the intro and on with the show. Okay, so welcome to What The Spec. In this series of videos, I answer the most commonly asked questions from our clients. So Utopia Computers is a computer manufacturer based in Scotland, and we build some awesome PCs, and thought it'd be really cool if we start sharing our knowledge with the world. Hence this YouTube channel, hence why I'm here today. So one of the questions we get asked all the time is how do I get the very best out of Octane Render? Well, as I said in the introduction, in this video we're gonna be talking about the best processor, the best memory, best graphics cards, graphics being very important for Octane Render, as well as the best storage. So it's gonna be a super exciting video, we're gonna whiz through it, and by the end you're gonna be an expert in configuring your own Octane Render workstation. Okay, so what the heck is Octane Render? Perhaps you've stumbled across this video and you're thinking to yourself, well that looks interesting, but I have no idea what Octane Render is. Well, I'm gonna tell you. It's an unbiased rendering engine, allowing graphic artists the world over to create stupidly realistic images. Now, that sounds very complicated, but what does unbiased rendering engine mean? Unbiased means that Octane doesn't deliberately introduce any errors into drawing the paths of light that allow it to create the 3D image that you see in front of you. This allows graphic artists, as I say, to create very, very realistic images. Unbiased rendering engines have been used the world over by our movie industries that we love for many, many years, but they've had access to huge render farms. This meant that that type of technology has been open to them, but not to us. Uh, thankfully, technology like Octane Render has now opened that to the masses, and we can all access that kind of glossy film-like finish uh, from relatively modest workstations in our own home and small offices. Now it's worth mentioning a quick thing about biased rendering engines like Redshift. Um, they are arguably faster at producing a final image, um, but they do deliberately produce, um, like a, I think it's an interpolinization technique. Um, it allows them to, to kind of skip um, paths of light uh, to create the image a little bit quicker. Uh, so that's what we're used to using, but moving forward, um, more and more creative individuals are using unbiased uh, rendering engines like Octane. So now we know what it is, let's crack on and find out what kind of PC we need to get the very best out of Octane. Okay, so what CPU platform is the best? Is it AMD or is it Intel? Well, the important thing, and for those in the know already, they'll understand that graphics is where Octane needs. It's what we're gonna come on to and talk about. It's the most important part, but that doesn't mean that your CPU is unimportant. It is, in fact, very critical to the performance you're gonna see in Octane Render. You see, your CPU determines how many PCI Express lanes your motherboard has um, available to you. Now, if you choose something like Intel's uh, kind of top of the line 9900K, then you're in fact only getting 16 PCI lanes, which means that you're only gonna be able to run one graphics card at full speed. Now, if you are looking to be able to take Octane seriously, then you can run an additional card at 8x, um, which is the slower speed. Um, and unless you're using large scenes, that will suffice, you will get extra performance. But if you're using large scenes within Octane Render, then you are gonna need the full speed of those lanes. And that's gonna take you on to something like AMD's Threadripper, which supports 64 PCI Express lanes, or Intel's Skylake X, which supports 44 PCI Express lanes. So Threadripper, um, AMD's uh, X399 platform, is our platform of choice for Octane Render at the moment. Okay, so you picked your processor platform and now you're thinking, how many cores and what frequency do I need to go for? Cores aren't overly important, but the frequency is actually quite important. Well, it doesn't make a massive difference at all during rendering times, it is gonna make a noticeable difference in loading the data into Octane and also coordinating that data between your graphics card and the processor. During testing, we've found four gigahertz seems to be the sweet spot, anything above that, and it is very much the law of diminishing returns. Anything below that, and there's a noticeable difference in loading times. So you wanna pick a processor that's around four gigahertz to ensure you have a super smooth workflow. 
So does Octane Bench work better overall with AMD or Intel? Well, as I said, as long as you get your PCIe lines correct and you get four gigahertz, it's actually okay whether you go AMD or Intel. What I would say, however, is that we are just super impressed with AMD at the moment. We are currently in July 2019 as I record this. The third gen of Ryzen chips have just came out. They are super sweet chips and they are kicking the butt of Intel. Um, at the moment, we really are leaning towards AMD for almost all our professional builds. There really isn't a reason you shouldn't be considering AMD in your next build. Um, go AMD. It's been 10 years since we've been able to say that um, reliably. So I'm very impressed with you bringing the competition to Intel and I look forward to Intel's reply. But at the moment, I would choose AMD. Skylake X or Threadripper, are those the platforms we should be using for Octane Render? It really does come down to how many graphics cards you are going to be installing in your system. If you're only installing one graphics card, then the actual chipsets don't really make a massive difference. But if you are planning on upgrading to um, up to four graphics cards, then yes, you definitely have to go for either Skylake X or Threadripper. You need those PCI lines that are available on those chips. Um, so your choices are a little bit limited. Uh, so it depends on the graphics cards. One, you can choose anything, but if you're gonna be going for more, I would strongly recommend a Skylake X or preferably AMD Threadripper platform. Okay, so occasionally we get asked, um, how about a dual CPU system? Is that gonna make any improvement in performance in Octane? Now Octane, again, it's all about the graphics cards, but what I would say is that if you're gonna be wanting to add more graphics cards than four in a single system, then yes, you're gonna to have to go for a dual CPU Xeon based system. That's gonna allow you to run easily up to eight graphics cards, and that's gonna be, well, pretty amazing for Octane. Um, so yes, uh, if you're gonna be going beyond four, then a dual CPU system is worthy of your money. But if you only need four GPUs, then no, a single GPU system like AMD's Threadripper platform is, uh, is well, it's where the money's at just now. Okay, so moving on to the most important part of this video, graphics. What graphics card is best for Octane Render? Now, the important thing to remember is that Octane Render is completely using your GPU. Yes, memory, storage, and CPU are important, but the graphics card is the key to getting Octane Render running well. Now, the great thing is that graphics cards are optimized for super parallel workloads, and that is one of the reasons why Octane Render is able to take advantage of NVIDIA's CUDA cores to such sweet, sweet effect. So much so that Octane has to be one of the most eloquent examples of scaling performance that I've ever seen on any application. If you have one GPU and you add a second GPU, you will double your performance. Add a third, you'll triple it. Add a fourth, you will quadruple it. It works as straightforward as that. We see often us posting pictures of Octane workstations that we've built for clients on the internet and gamers around the world are all looking at it going, why, why would you fit four graphics cards inside one PC? In games, when you fit two graphics cards, it makes barely any difference. In fact, sometimes it slows them down, uh, but in Octane, it just scales beautifully. So yes, um, CUDA cores and NVIDIA cards are what you're looking for here. Okay, so what is the single fastest card to put your money on? That would be the RTX Titan. If you're building a workstation where you're only gonna fit one or two GPUs, the RTX Titan is definitely where your money should be. Bear in mind that I said one or two GPUs. The RTX Titan comes with a proprietary cooler. It's only made by NVIDIA, and it has two massive, beautiful, kind of housed in a golden heat sink fan. Um, but those fans mean they can't be sandwiched together, so you can only ever fit two of those cards in one system. Uh, if you're planning on fitting three or four cards, or maybe even more, then you have to go for blower style coolers, and that means you're gonna be limited, in a way, to the 2080 Ti model. 2080 Ti's are available with a blower style card that you'll recognize it by a kind of, normally a black housing um, heat sink with a, 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 a turbine type fan at the back of the card. Um, those cards um, will be perfectly happy sandwiched together. They'll run all day long with no thermal issues. Um, the only thing I would add to that is, if you need more than 11 gigabytes of RAM for your scenes, then you may want to look at either an NVLink or you may want to look at NVIDIA Quadro uh, options, which will allow you to pull more RAM together. So will multiple cards make a difference in Octane Render? Well, this is one of the most excellent, beautiful, exquisite, elegant examples of performance scaling that you will see anywhere. 
If you have one card and you've got baseline performance, if you put two, you'll have 100% more, put three, 300% more, and four, 400% more performance. It literally scales as beautifully as that. It doesn't get any simpler. Octane will eat up the performance of your cards. We have posted pictures of Octane Render Workstations on our social media networks, and we are often called out by gamers the world over going, whoa, what are you doing, man? You don't put four cards in a system. If you put two cards in a system, it barely works. Um, games slow down, the driver's compatibility, there's all sorts of issues. No, these cards are not running in what's called SLI configuration. They are separate cards. Octane sees them as separate cards and they perform separately, but they will run really, really well. So yes, Octane definitely, definitely performs better with multiple NVIDIA GPUs. So I mentioned Quadro earlier. Is Quadro any good for Octane Render? Well, yeah, it is. I mean, there's no denying its performance and stability. However, uh, NVIDIA's GeForce cards are generally gonna be better value for money. The only thing I would say for Quadro is that if you, A, need more than 11 gigabytes of VRAM on the card because you're using extremely large scenes, then you will get an advantage. You've got to consider the cost of that advantage, but you will get an advantage. B, you need 10-bit color for other applications. Or C, you want the driver stability that comes with Quadro and also the chip stability. The Quadro cards are like the cream of the crop, so they arguably will be more reliable for longer, uh, but that has to be taken with a pinch of salt because to get the same performance for a Quadro, you're gonna be spending an awful lot more money than you would on the GeForce range. Okay, can I use an AMD graphics card with Optane? They're in the news all the time, surely they would be good. Well, unfortunately, no. Um, Optane renders designed specifically to use NVIDIA's CUDA cores. Uh, AMD doesn't have those, uh, so if you were to fit an AMD card, it just wouldn't work. So no, it has to be NVIDIA if you're an Optane workstation user. Okay, so are the new RT cores making a big difference uh, in Optane renders? So should you upgrade for example, if you have um, one of the, the older generation cards, so say you've got a, a GTX 1080 Ti, does it make a big difference if you go to the new RTX 2080 Ti? Well, yeah, it does, it's amazing. The, the RT cores are providing performance up to three times faster than the equivalent predecessor card. So we're seeing massive performance increases, all going well. With a bit of magic, I'm gonna throw up some benchmarks that we recorded at Utopia, and you're gonna be able to see those results for yourself, but yes, you definitely want to consider um, the upgrading to RTX if you're not already. Okay, nice and short and sweet. How much memory does Octane Render want and use? The sweet spot for Octane Render is 32 gigabytes. It can utilize that and that will be best for performance. It's worth saying that the Sonox G4 line of workstations that Utopia produces can go up to 128 gigabytes. That can be very handy if you use other applications that can utilize that amount of memory. Excuse me, it's also worth saying that Octane can utilize your video RAM when it runs out of VRAM on your graphics cards. However, this will slow down your render times. Okay, we're in the home straight. What kind of storage should you choose for your Octane render workstation? If you've watched any of my videos before, you'll see that there are three options, mechanical, SSD, and NVMe. If you're Want the best performance, you kind of have to go with NVMe. Yes, it's not gonna make a massive difference to your render times, in fact, it might not make any difference at all, but it is gonna make a difference opening those project files, and it is gonna make a difference turning your system on and opening applications. NVMe is just the go-to choice, especially when you're looking at a system of this value. Now, if you are looking for a backup drive for older projects, things you're not working on just now, things you just wanna keep, then I would still recommend thinking about SSD storage. While the prices in recent days have went up a little, they're still offering excellent value for money. And if you are looking for larger, much longer term storage, then mechanical is still a viable option. Okay, so the conclusion. How do you build the very best Octane Render workstation? I'm gonna take all the information that I just gave you, I'm gonna wrap it up in a nice little sweet bundle and give it to you. So, if you're building a workstation with one GPU, then you wanna consider AMD's brand new X570 chipset. Only a few weeks ago, I would've been saying to you that Intel would've been the option here, because if you use any other applications like Adobe's Creative Suite, then the Intel platform would have been better. But now, in July 2019, it is AMD all the way. 
Now, moving forward, if you're going to be fitting more than one GPU, then you need to consider AMD's Threadripper platform. The X399 platform has got PCI lanes more than you could ever ask for, and it is where you want to be if you're thinking of building a multiple GPU Octane render workstation. Now, moving on to your graphics cards, the 2080 Ti, so that's the RTX 2080 Ti from NVIDIA, is by far the best value for money in Octane Render, but the 2070, um, you know, will suffice if you're building a single GPU system and you're on a bit of a budget constraint. If you're gonna be fitting more than one GPU, then you do need to consider, you need, you need, 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 need to buy the Bloor style cards. Nothing else will do, um, yeah. Uh, if you're thinking about 10-bit color uh, or needing this driver stability that comes with uh, Quadro, then they are still an option, but bear in mind that you're gonna be here an awful lot of money for those benefits. Moving on to RAM, 32 gigabytes is the sweet spot, but remember that other applications you might use might need more, and the Octane can use your RAM when it runs out of VRAM to render extremely large scenes, but that does incur a speed rendering penalty. Finally, storage, NVMe M.2 storage is our recommendation for your operating system drive and for Octane Render and Cinema 4D and any other applications you're using, as well as any project files you're working on at the time. So buy, um, you know, size accordingly. And that's us. We now know exactly how to build the perfect Octane Render workstation. I would love to hear your comments on this. If you are a Cinema 4D user and use Octane, if you use Octane for a different application, let me know um, Let me know what you think of it. Let me know some of your work. I love seeing the amazing stuff that you guys can produce. We can build the hardware, but you really show it off with the results of your digital art. So please uh, let me know, hit the comments. If you like this video, if you find it useful, hit like. If you wanna see more videos like this, then please subscribe. It makes it all worthwhile when we see those numbers going up and getting a little bit of love from our viewers. So until next time, you have a good time. I'm gonna have a good time. And uh, yeah, happy rendering.